So this is what 30 or 40 acres of farming for the sun looks like. Pennsylvania has fallen way behind in the race for clean energy. And with agriculture not paying as much as it used to, farmers have taken a completely different tactic. Now, they farm for the sun. I'm standing in the middle of what used to be a cornfield in Lancaster County. The farmer here is a pioneer. He replaces old crops with what you see now, thousands of solar panels. Let's go talk to him and find out why he did it. Like I said, I farmed for 50 years and been there and done some of that. Gerald Kreider has spent his entire 75 years on this 90-acre farm. A lifetime working this land has taken its toll. Yeah, my walking don't do real well anymore. So when a realtor friend approached him about a new opportunity, Gerald was willing to listen. No, I just pretty much uh, heard, listened to what he had to say. And it sounded pretty desirable. I was, had already farmed for like 50 years. We told nobody till it came out in the paper. I figured, you know, now he's getting people stirred up. It seemed like people were very uh, open to it. There's no noise. There's no smell. Gerald doesn't look or sound the part of a tech guy, but that's exactly what he is. His farm is a milestone in Pennsylvania solar development. Its roots date back nearly a decade, when it was simply a seed of thought in the mind of an energy entrepreneur working to make Pennsylvania a greener state. I'm Brent Aldifer. I'm founder and CEO of Community Energy. We develop large-scale solar and wind projects across the country. Aldifer was born and raised in Montgomery County, outside of Philadelphia. While living in Colorado during the 1990s, he first became interested in clean energy. Now back home, he believes Pennsylvania farmers can preserve their prized farmland while changing the state's energy dependence at the same time. This farm could have very easily been lost. By putting up solar, which might at first look like development, what we're able to do is preserve the farmland. If you can see, these solar modules are mounted on steel posts, much like fence posts. And at the end of their life, which is 25 or 30 years, this can be pulled off. And what you have, because we've had grass, you have improved farmland guaranteed return to the landowner after 25 years. The dollars per acre that we pay to the farmer each year is usually three to four times what the farmer was making under previous farmland use. Right now, Community Energy is building a 70 megawatt farm near Gettysburg, 10 times larger than Keystone. The city of Philadelphia agreed to purchase electricity from the new farm to power almost a quarter of municipal buildings, like city hall, libraries, and rec centers. How does that whole process work? We all get our electricity from the same transmission grid. You may be getting electricity from a Limerick nuclear plant, or a coal plant up north of Allentown, or even further out in the western part of the state. That's all fed into the same grid. So right now, we're getting our electricity from multiple sources around the state. So once you propose to build a big solar farm, to feed into that grid. The only question is, who's gonna buy the power? Linking a buyer like the city of Philadelphia with farmland in Gettysburg is perhaps the toughest job for Aldifer and other solar entrepreneurs. It's these connections that need to be made to completely reshape the state's energy economy. Take a look at how far behind Pennsylvania actually is in solar energy production. The state has just 433 total megawatts of solar power. Yet right next door, New Jersey, puts out nearly seven times as much solar power. California is by far the largest generator of solar power, with single installations that each produce more than all of Pennsylvania. The fastest thing we can do in Pennsylvania to really boost solar, which includes solar jobs, as well as solar economics and taxes, is to get the policy right. That policy incentivized solar growth to kickstart more projects like Gerald's Farm. Can you tell me what they, uh, what they pay you? We, we never discussed that. It's okay. <laughs> Is that okay? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's much more than you would make off of corn or beans or... What would you tell all the farmers that, uh, that thought, you know, is this a good well, idea? Well, yeah, if they go for it. I uh, sort of have to go with the flow and technology is in the flow. Yes. You know that. Yes. Every day it's something new.